If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that a lot of my blog projects are focused around entertainment and partying because I like a good party. I also got engaged this past summer and I want to start creating projects that can be used at a DIY backyard wedding. And so today's focus is on this copper and wood bar cart that I'm really excited to show you guys how I made. To help make this project come to life, I partnered with my amazing friends at Burns and Matic. And if you're looking for all of the tools and materials that I use for this project, you can click on the link below this video to go to my website. To get started, I measured and cut the frame pieces for the trays that are attached to the legs. And in total, there were eight pieces, four long ones and four short ones. And all of the dimensions that I use can be found on that same blog post with the materials and the tools used for the project. Once the pieces were cut, I trimmed four feet dowels down to three feet tall because this is how tall I want the bar cart to be. It was at this point that I realized that the frame pieces weren't going to bump up against the dowel because they were too flat. So I tried a couple of different methods, but what I found was that taking it to the spindle sander and just giving it a little bit of a contour helped everything lay nice and flush. And now when I attach everything together later, it's gonna fit together beautifully. After I was happy with the layout, I measured and cut my plywood pieces for the bottom of each of the trays or the shelves or whatever it is you want to call them. And I just brought that plywood over to the table saw and made my cuts. I was originally going to insert them into grooves in the one by three frame pieces, but it wasn't really happening the way that I wanted to with those doweled legs. I also realized that the sharp corners of the plywood had to go, so I just used a jigsaw to cut them out so that the dowels would fit nice and snug against the plywood later. Because I knew I'd have to play around with some bobbing and weaving later with the copper piping, I just opted for pocket hole joinery for this project and it worked really well. And since I have this foreman in my shop, I'm able to drill all the pocket holes rather quickly and this just felt like the best option for this project. One mistake I did run into was drilling two pocket holes into the end of each frame piece. So if you're building this, you can just get away with using one and some wood glue, which I'll show you a little later. Once all the pocket holes were drilled, I focused my energy on creating the trays by gluing and screwing the plywood piece into the one by three boards. And I did use a spacer underneath the plywood in order to completely center it in the one by three. And as you can see, it did cover up one of those pocket holes, which is why I said to just use one instead of two. Once both of my trays were built, I used my fancy foot clamps to hold the dowels into place and measure how long I needed to cut the copper piping in order to fit it onto the tray. I then took those measurements to the copper piping and just marked everything out and used my cutting tool to cut them down to size. And again, you can find all the measurements that I used for these pipes on my website. I wanted to add a little bit of an element of design to these pipes, so I opted to add copper coupling to the end, but the connection was really loose and CA glue wasn't working out so hot, so I decided to go ahead and try to solder it together for a stronger joint. And to start, I used some sandpaper to just remove some of the material from the copper pipe and then used a pipe cleaner to clean the connection in which the coupling is going to attach to the pipe itself. I then added flux to both ends of the connection, which will help keep this joint nice and tight. And once it was ready, I applied heat from my burns matic torch directly to the connection. It only took a couple of minutes to get the connection hot enough for the soldering wire to melt in the joint. And I just kept a damp rag around to get rid of any of the excess material that was dripping off. I was honestly pretty surprised by how easy this process was. And these joints are really tight, like they are bound for life and they are not going anywhere. I repeated this on every single end piece of the pipes and since I cut eight pipes, that meant 16 different connections needed to be added with this process. After chatting with my friend Mike from Modern Builds, he suggested that I use a file and 320 grit sandpaper as well as an abrasive pad to clean up these pipes and man Mike, were you correct because they looked awesome after buffing. Yeah. 
And once the copper piping was done, it was time to move on to the legs. And I just marked on the legs where I wanted to connect the frame pieces for the shelves. And I added them to the shelves and used wood glue and pocket hole screws to attach everything firmly into place. One of the things that I had to keep in mind was that I still had to add the copper piping and drill openings for it. So I just started by adding the bottom tray first to help with alignment and worried about the top tray later. When getting ready to drill the holes for the copper piping, I realized that I actually didn't have any sort of way to make sure that the holes would stay consistent. So I just created a jig out of a scrap piece of wood where I created an opening that would fit perfectly around the dowel. And then after cutting that out with my bandsaw, I brought that jig to my drill press and just drilled a hole directly through it at the size in which I was drilling the holes for the copper pipe. The piece that I used actually ends up being too thick, so I also brought it to the table saw to make it a little thinner. Once I made the jig, it was fairly simple to use. I just placed it over the dowel with a spacer piece of wood and then marked the depth at which I wanted to drill my holes on the actual drill bit itself. And I used the same exact size drill bit that I used to make the jig so that everything lined up perfectly. All in all, I was really happy I made a jig for this portion of the build because I was able to drill the holes really quickly. And since there were four holes in each dowel, I was actually able to get them done within a few minutes. One thing that really helped with alignment during this process was that I attached that bottom tray to the dowels first because it held everything nice and tightly into place as I used the jig. And this made sure that all of the holes lined up perfectly for the copper piping. Once all of the openings were drilled, I just used a quick setting epoxy and applied it to the copper piping, which was already buffed out from the sanding process. And I applied that to the dowels itself by sliding them into place, wiping away the excess, and then eventually once all four were in place on the bottom level, just clamping it all in so that it dried. <laughs> I then continued the same exact process up top by attaching the tray to the top portion of the dowels and then attaching the copper pipes the same exact way. There were a few times in which I had to screw and unscrew the tray into place to make room for the dowels to fit, but it all worked out. And once everything was in place, I just sanded everything down by hand. Once everything was sanded, I finished off the piece with a dark walnut Danish oil. While the piece dried, I buffed out some casters and just sprayed them copper to match the piping details on the bar cart. And after they dried, I drilled holes into the underside of the dowels and then attached the casters by tapping them into place with a mallet. And the best part of the project, I then went inside, cracked open my favorite bottle of tequila, and celebrated this really fun project. I really like how sleek and slimline this looks, and the copper piping added such a cool element and a really nice accent to the bar cart, and I really couldn't be happier with the way this build came out. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the future, and also be sure to visit my website for more projects as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and happy DIYing. Excuse me, I'm trying to shoot a video. <laughs> Titan, good job. Good boy.